Hello, my name is Barbara Hanisch. I'm from the University of Vienna and I'm working at the Center for Translation Studies. My talk addresses the collaboration of citizens and its revolutionary potential in the digital humanity. But first of all, we have to define what citizen science actually means. And citizen science is usually defined as the active engagement of members of the public in academic research. And these members of the public are usually non-professional researchers and non-experts in the field to which they are contributing. As you can see here, the participants might be contributing to different steps in the research process. That might be, for example, uh, they might help to define the research question. They might, which is usually the most often used form of citizen science, they might help in the project implementation. Basically, they have to collect data for academic purposes, but they might also analyze data or describe the results. And regarding dissemination, participants might also be involved in publication of the findings and helping to inform public policy, for example. So in its most comprehensive form, citizen science means that participants are also involved in the decision-making uh, in the research proce process itself, for example, which methods should be used. But what about citizen science in the digital humanities? Basically, in the, citizen, uh, in the digital humanities, citizen science is back on a long tradition, and the contributions of citizens can be, for example, data collection, transcription, annotation, or also translation. And in the digital humanities, participants have been contributing to fields such as lexicography, art, history, etc. And there are, of course, different levels of engagement, which means that, for example, in contributory projects, participants are rather providing data, but they are not involved in any further research steps. In collaborative projects, participants are already active in more than one research step, for example, data collection and data analysis. And in co-created projects, participants also have a say regarding the decisions uh, in the research project itself, for example, which So since the title of my contribution is the transformative potential, the revolutionary potential of citizen science, we have to first have a look what are the promises of citizen science according to the citizen science literature. And according to the authors in citizen science, citizen science can help to, on the one hand, increase the public understanding of science. It can help to diversify the epistemologies presented in research. According to the European Commission, citizen science can help to increase trust in science. It might also help for example, according to the research, uh, responsible research and innovation paradigm, to align science with the needs, values, and concerns of society. Basically, citizen science can also support researchers in improving the relationship between science and society. And of course, citizen science can also help to achieve great goals, for example, greater impact regarding, for example, to reach the sustainable development goals or to democratize science. Finally, citizen science might also improve scientific literacy and participation. And now to see if citizen science can actually keep its promises, I had a look at different citizen science platforms. Citizen science platforms are basically websites that list different citizen science projects which came from, from a certain discipline or from, with regard to certain activities. At these Types of platforms can be differentiated, by example, for example, if they are general platforms or if they are specialized platforms. General platforms means that they are not focusing on a certain discipline or a certain activity, but they rather list any citizen science project in the field, uh, in, in, the, in science and uh, academic research. On the other hand, there are specialized platforms, and specialized platforms can be on the one hand regarding specialized regarding activity. This can be, for example, data collection, transcription, annotation, translation, georeferencing, and so on. And platforms can also be specialized with regards to topics, for example, if they address language, history, archaeology, philosophy, and so on. 
And if we have a look at these platforms, uh, can we actually keep the promises that we have seen before of citizen science? And first of all, we have a look at the general platform of SciStata, which is hosted in the US. And there we can see a broad range of citizen science projects, and the participants usually can choose from different activities from different here. The same holds true for the general platform of Zooniverse, where also different disciplines are listed and participants can filter the projects according to their interests and according to the discipline. And the special thing about the universe is participants can actually directly work on the platform. For example, they can directly work on the analysis, uh, on the analysis of data on the universe platform. Then we also have a European pendant, namely the EU citizen science platform, and it's also a general platform that lists citizen science projects from a wide range of disciplines. And uh, there are also national platforms, which are also general platforms, for example, in the German-speaking area, Bürgerschaft und Wissen, Österreich forscht, or Schweiz forscht. Regarding the specialized citizen science platforms, as I've mentioned before, they can be differentiated according to the topic. For example, there is language arc addressing languages, and we have micropast addressing archaeology, or we have citizen science platforms that are specialized, for example, according to activity. You might have heard about Spotteron, which is hosting a wide range of citizen science projects, usually with a geo-referencing component in them. And there are also other platforms in digital humanities that address, for example, transcription only or translation only or annotation only. So if we analyze these citizen science projects and these um, levels of engagement and the promises that citizen science might hold, we might see that on the one hand, citizen science platforms might open up new ways of collaboration beyond academia. But of course, there are also risks and boundaries based on these platforms for the digital humanities. And as I've mentioned before, the revolutionary potential of citizen science can be found in opening up science, in democratizing science, in increasing trust in science, and so on. But the nature of these citizen science platforms already predetermines the type of collaborations that we can have with, as we just have with the participants. Because the digital humanities projects on these platforms often focus on activities that are related to crowdsourcing and on micro tasks that can be done online from home alone. But specialized digital humanities platforms that uh, might focus on, for example, uh, other aspects, not only micro tasks, but can also help the established community increase the sense of belonging and have a more engaged community. However, I don't have empirical evidence for this but this is an effort. The risks and limitations associated with citizen science on these platforms are basically related to aspects such as law and copyright. For example, who owns data if participants are collecting data and contributing to research projects? Also, if they make pictures, who has actually done the copyright or these? Other aspects are, for example, related to research integrity and data quality, which frequently discuss topics in science, especially also in the digital humanities. Uh, aspects that also might pose limitations uh, on these platforms for the digital humanities are the contribution of their data, the sustainability of projects. So if you have your project, if your project is mentioned on one of these citizen science platforms, are you only going there, for example, to collect the data, to answer your research question, to reach your goals? Or are you actually planning to have a sustained community that contributes to your research over a longer period of time? And these citizen science platforms also might propagate power relations, since these citizen science platforms are basically designed for researchers who have a research question, who have already designed the project, and they want the contribution of participants to reach their research aim on their research goals. So this might actually, uh, for example, impede working at high level with the volunteers. And regarding the keyword volunteers, 
it also means, for example, that you have some aspects regarding the exploitation of volunteers for your purposes that you have to consider if you are listed on these uh, platforms, but only not only on these platforms, but in general, when you're going to contact citizen science. And another aspect is, of course, ethics. That's also related to volunteer works. What are you actually planning to do with the data as researcher? And finally, also the aspect of citizen scholarship and as well as societal impact of your research and the expectations of the participants should be taken into account. So to conclude, on the one hand, the citizen science platforms show that not all digital humanities projects are suited for citizen science, at least for this crowdsourcing approach that the citizen science platforms are also supporting. And as I've mentioned before, the citizen science platforms predetermine the ways of collaboration with the public already. Nevertheless, they have some transformative potential and they can keep at least some promises of citizen science with regards to opening science or basically also to the humanities and in also making the digital humanities more visible and allowing the public to get a glimpse of academic research in the digital humanities. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions.